One of my favorite things to do on this channel is to come up with a problem that exists on Linux and then solve that problem through the use of some basic bash scripting or using some of the basic command line utilities, the GNU core utils, things like that. And today I came up with this problem that exists on Linux that's very easy to solve. And I'm really not going to get into a lot of scripting or programming or any nerdy stuff. I'm going to show you how a typical Linux user solves these problems. And how they typically solve these problems is you do a quick Google search or whatever. You, you Typically you'll find solutions on on forums such as Stack Overflow, and then you just do a copy and paste. Somebody's probably already written the script for you, and then you just implement that into your workflow. So the problem I was wanting to solve today was desktop notifications. You get your little desktop notifications on Linux. When you get a new email, you'll get a little box saying you've got a new email, or when somebody messages you on a social media like Mastodon or something, you'll get the little pop-up box. And I always assumed that the these notifications were logged somewhere on Linux, like there was some file somewhere where all of your notifications were written to that you could go back and later view this stuff. But that's actually not the case. Some desktop environments, some of the bigger desktop environments, you know, they'll have little widgets where when you click on your notifications, they'll give you a list of your past handful of notifications or whatever. I know that exists in GNOME, KDE Plasma, Budgie has a little side panel that pops out with your notifications, but you can't go very far back in your history. And these things are really not permanently saved anywhere. It's not like you can go back and read notifications from like last week, last month, last year. Well, I want these things permanently saved to a log file. So let me switch over to my desktop and show you a little bit of what I want to do here. I'm in Xmonad today, so I'm in a tiling window manager, Xmonad. The panel at the top here is the Xmobar panel, and that's important to know because first of all, I'm going to open a terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to send myself a message instead of waiting for like an email or something to come up, right? You could be waiting for minutes or even hours for your next desktop notification. I'm going to do notify-send. Notify send takes two arguments. Typically, the first argument is often the program sending you the message or the online service sending you the message or whatever it happens to be. So I could do something like Firefox and maybe the message that Firefox is sending me is some message. OK, and if I click on that, you can see I get the notification, my little desktop notification from Firefox sending me some message. Now let me click on the desktop notification so it goes away. Now imagine I didn't really read that message. Maybe it was important, you know, for whatever reason. I just wasn't thinking. I clicked on it, you know, out of habit, and I really wanted to read that message. I can't go back and read it now. Well, in Xmobar, I've now added this widget here with the little uh, Twitter icon, you know, because so many of your desktop notifications or social media uh, messages. Anyway, I added the little Twitter icon, view notifications. And if I click on this widget, look what happens. It opens a text file here, which I called notify.log. And I put that in my home directory in a hidden directory called .log. It should exist on your system anyway. And you can see I have all of my past notifications, including some message from Firefox here. Now, let me actually uh, clean up this log just so it's obvious. So let me just make it an empty file again. And let's do a notify send. And this time, maybe the uh, notification is coming from something like, I don't know, Mastodon. You have a new message. And if I go back to the file, you can see Mastodon, I have a new message. And you can see I've got the, the notification here as well. So that is really neat. As long as I never delete the log, you know, I, I could keep this thing running for weeks, months, or even years. I could go back and read past notifications. Now, how did I get this to work? Well, it actually was not that complicated. If I switch over to my web browser here, all I did was do a Google search on Linux desktop notifications logging you know, saving or logging them or whatever. And I quickly realized that this is a common problem on Linux is that your uh, notifications are not logged somewhere. They're not saved permanently somewhere. And one of the top Google searches I did was this thread on Ask Ubuntu, which is part of Stack Exchange, right? And then this guy had this little script here. Very interesting little bash script. There's not much to it. There is a program here, Dbus Monitor. You can see Dbus Monitor, it's going to monitor for notifications on your system. 
Then you pipe it into grip several times. You're gripping various things out of that. And then through the magic of Xargs, you're taking the result of all of that gripping and you're passing that as an argument into echo and you're echoing into file. And of course, file could be the name of any file you choose. And later in the post, he actually cleans it up a bit where he uh, has a version where he adds the date as well. And you could see that. Oh, it's, it's, that's the one I'm actually using here. It adds the date for a line and then the first argument to notify sin and then date again and then the second argument as well. And this is typically how you know, even somebody like me, I know a little programming and scripting. You know, a lot of times I just take stuff from the Internet. Just go to Stack Exchange, right? Anytime you find a problem, I mean, you could sit here and uh, write your own script. But a lot of times, especially for those of you that fear scripting, somebody's probably put in the work for you. Now, let me switch over to this Emacs buffer. This is Dear Ed inside Emacs, which is essentially a file manager. This is my home directory. If I go into uh, dot local slash bin, you know, these are scripts on the system, right? And I now have this script that I titled notify dash log. Let me hit enter, let me zoom in. And that's essentially that script that I just ripped from Stack Exchange, right? Uh, let me turn off the truncated lines. Let me zoom out a little bit here. You can see there's not much to it. Log file is just a variable name. I could have named it anything equals a dollar sign one. So that's, I'm going to give this script an input. The input should be the name of a file. And then it's just running this dbus monitor interface free desktop notifications command, which is piped into grip several times where it's uh, doing some regex and, and some uh, pattern matching. And it's taking the appropriate lines. And then with xorgs, it's taking those as an argument for the printf command. So printf equals, and then it's going to print out the date, and then it's going to print out a new line, and then you got the opening and closing braces. That is uh, what xorgs is going to pass into the printf command. So that's going to be the two arguments from the notify send command. And then you've got the two right pointing chevrons, the two greater than signs, meaning we're going to append that information to dollar sign log file. So whatever log file, whatever the name of that file I'm using, it's always going to append that file with each new notification. And then all I need to do is run this script and make sure this script is running in the background. It's a background process. So typically, I think the easiest way to make this magic happen is in your window manager. Let me zoom in. This is Xmonad. I've got my auto start uh, startup hook here. And you can see now I have spawn once notify dash log because that's the name of the script and I don't have to do the full path because dot local slash bin is where that script is currently living and that is part of my shells path so I can just do notify dash log and then I have to give it an argument and the argument should be where the location of the log file that you want to write to. So every time I log into Xmonad or restart Xmonad, it's going to start this notification log script that is essentially running in the background. And every time I get a desktop notification, it's going to write to that log file. So, you know, I can quickly pull it up anytime I want to read those notifications. And of course, you know, I didn't just have to edit my Xmonad config. I also had to edit the... Uh, xmobar config as well. So let me open my uh, Doom 1 xmobar RC color scheme here. Once again, let me turn off truncated lines here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let me make this full screen so it'll be a little easier. So this is my xmobar RC. All I did was I added two new widgets here. So you can see run com, so that's run command, any shell command, and the command I'm going to run is the echo command. I'm going to echo this font awesome icon, and the font awesome icon is the little Tweety Bird, right? <laughs> so, And then I named this widget messages, and I want it to run every 3600 seconds. You know, it doesn't have to run very often because that icon, of course, is never going to change. And then the next line, if we ignore the commented lines, is run command echo and we're just going to echo the words view notifications and then I named this widget notify dash log and then later in the template section of xmobar I actually have messages 
wrapped in percent signs. So that's very important. You see the, the beginning and the trailing percent signs around messages. That's letting me know that that is a widget that I've created. And you know, that's the uh, uh, Tweety Bird icon, right? The messages widget there. And then the next widget is the notify log widget, which is simply the words view notifications. And I have that wrapped in this action tag here. Action is a clickable event for Exmo Bar. When I click it, what is the action? I want the action to be, I want you to open the Alacrity terminal, and then I want you to open NeoVim inside Alacrity, and I want you to read dot log slash notify dot log. So it looks like it's a lot of complicated stuff, but it really isn't. And again, if we wanted to see uh, some of this in action, just to verify that this is working, let's do another uh, notify send. And I'm just going to do, it's from somebody named one and he's sending me this message too. Right, one, two, right here. Click on it, and you can see that the log automatically changes. There's one, two, and you know that's just going to be my notification log. It, it should exist forever, and you know until maybe one day it gets to such a size, maybe I want to delete it and start afresh. So there you have it, a little bit of different kind of video because it's a real world problem. But I really didn't do anything nerdy. I actually showed you kind of behind the curtain, the secrets of the Linux power user, the desktop power user, where we have a problem. How do we solve it? Well, I did a Google search and I found somebody that wrote a little code on Stack Exchange. And I took that code. Now, I had to actually do something with his code. And the code by itself really didn't do anything. I had to implement that code into what I'm already using as far as I had to implement it into XMonad and XMoBar. I had to decide where I was going to write to a log file, the location, how I was going to auto start the, uh, the monitoring, the Dbus monitor as well. So, you know, it took me 10 minutes. 10 minutes to actually do that Google search and then get all of this up and running. And the reason I show you guys these kinds of real world problems that you could solve using scripting, command line tools and things like that is because you need to know this. And it's one of those things that people fear this, but it's the more you do this, the more you practice problem solving. And that's all this is. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be Linux related or programming related and things like that. This is just life. The more you get used to, I've got a problem, let me figure out how to solve it, the better you get at solving problems, the better you become at solving problems, not just in tech, but also in life. And one of the most important reasons why you want to improve at these kinds of problem solving skills, especially those of you that are passionate about Linux and free and open source software, is the better you become at this, then the better equipped you are to help others. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of the show. Brian, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Why you bald, homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, George, Lee, Marstrom, Nader, Jan, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. And if you want my config files, check my .files repository over on my GitLab.